It is Vanderpump Night. We're talking all about this week's episodes of Vanderpump Rules and episode three of The Valley is the worst thing you can be called a Republican. Well, today's going to be full of unpopular opinions. I hope you're ready for it because I got my pal Jacques from the Unpopular Podcast. He's going to be coming on the podcast it, or well, he's going to be coming on the YouTube in just a sec. Let's, let's dive in. <laughs> You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TV tea, surf fresh all week long. Now, let's dive in. Oh, it's the dynamic duo you're probably going to cancel one day, but until then, we're going to be here pissing you off on the YouTube and the podcast circuit. Please welcome my boy, Jacques. Thanks for having me back. Oh my God, I'm already back after a week. Am I like a series regular now? You're becoming one of my chumps. Okay, good. I, I need to be someone's chump. <laughs> um, Christopher's asking, is this recorded? No, Chris, we are live. I am fresh from wine night at the bodega. Jacques is fresh from shopping at the Grove. We are L-I-V-E right now. Oh my God, I didn't even know this was live. Okay, good, because I could have said some crazy shit and then been like, edit it out, Zach. And it's like, ah, oh, that was live. So nope, that's good to know. We do Vanderpump recaps live on Wednesday nights, Jacques, and you've been welcomed into the family. Oh my God. Well, I'm sorry for keeping everyone waiting. Yeah, I was out shopping. I was like trotting around the Grove, like, I'll be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Lisa says, yes, in LA, Republican is fighting words. I agree. When, uh, Zach on the Valley was like, if you're Republican, you have to be like on the DL. You know what? I, I mean, I don't know if we want to get into it later or now. I don't think so that much. I, I mean, obviously I'm Australian, but, um, I feel like coming here, you know, I've got friends of all different political persuasions. I think it matters more like what group you're in. Like, I feel like their little group is sort of like the typical, like very liberal, liberal, like Bravo viewer, like bubble. But I kind of feel like my world, I know people that are like Republican, independent, like on the left. So I don't think it's like across the board. Um, thank you, Holly, for saying I look tonight. I'm, um, one, it's past my bedtime, and two, like I said, I just did wine night at the bodega, so you don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. Michelle says, Zach's got that bodega glow. I had to go to the bodega because J-Lo is getting dragged on the internet because she's like, I'm from the the Bronx, and I went to the bodega on the block, and everyone's like, one, what block? And J-Lo's like, did you see that video of J-Lo? And she's like, my order at the bodega is I got a ham and cheese on a roll and the orange drink, if you know, you know, and then I get a small bag of chips. And Everyone's like... What kind of chips? Is there a, a medium and a large bag of chips? Like, what is the small bag of chips? Why are you getting a basic ham and cheese on a roll? And what is the orange drink? I mean, she's literally so delusional, but that's what's so amazing. Like, I'm obsessed with her having an alcohol line, even though she doesn't drink and her husband is a sober alcoholic. Like, <laughs> I love her. What, what is her alcohol line? She literally has a line of alcohol and she doesn't drink and she does ads for it on Instagram. And then she'll be like, here, she'll be like, mm, I'm just having my like Delola. And then she'll pretend to sip it. And she's like, not really sipping it. And like Ben Affleck famously battled alcoholism. It was like a whole thing. And she goes and launches an alcohol line. Like that woman can't say no to anything. Wow. She also has her JLo glow line. Are you using any of her skincare? No, but I love when she came out. Like skincare buff. I am. I like um I like Jeffree Star out of the celebrity uh Jacques, line. No, seriously, Jacques is like the Bethany of skincare on Instagram. <laughs> I just love and well, I'm the Bethany of like LA now because every time I like do something new here in LA, like I tried ranch for the first time the other day and I was a lot of I got a lot of backlash because I was like, this tastes like shit. I'm like, do you guys really eat this and everyone was like no you're having like the wrong ranch like that's like cheap supermarket stuff you've got to go to like barry's pizza and get their ranch and i'm like okay i just don't know if i want to become like a sauce person listen ranch for the most part is ranch and you only appreciate it if like you ate it growing up and then you like oh okay like you've developed the ranch palette other than that like ranch is not anything special like i don't eat ranch anymore i used to when i was like you know a fat kid that like ate everything but like now like ranch is overrated yeah, well, I just know it because of Stasi. I always remember, like, Stasi was obsessed with ranch and, like, true crime. So that's what I associate it with. Yes. 
storm is right. If it's like good fresh ranch, like yes, but like like I said, I grew up on like a Burger King pellet. Like that was our budget growing up. We were a fast food family that like that's just you, you had ranch because that was the option of the options. You know, Wait, that's crazy that you grew up a fast food family because you're so health conscious. Like you're like Mr. Health Nut. I feel like people don't I even don't... realize how into like the health space you are and how much you like know about it. I know. I don't even remember the last time I had. Actually, I do remember the last time I had McDonald's. It was maybe like a year or two ago. And I bought something because I had to pee so bad. And I was like, I feel so bad going into a McDonald's to use the restroom and not buying anything. So I was like, I used to love McDonald's fries. So let me get fries. And so I like kind of had some fries. They weren't that great. But like, no, I don't eat fast food. I like don't eat gluten. I don't eat dairy. I try to like really limit my sugar. Um, my only vice is alcohol. Yeah, you you're, you love the booze. I do, I do like no sugar wine, like low alcohol. Like I, you know, I do, you know, we have to listen. I need one vice. That's true. I tell myself that my vice is like chocolate because I have the biggest sweet tooth. Like I, you are a big myself. sugar junkie. Yeah, it's bad. Um, where is Joe Mendoza with the jokes? Joe was boycotting tonight's live because he said that it was happening way too late tonight. So he said, I'm not joining. I'm going to bed. And I was like, okay, Joe, go and jack off and go to bed and we'll hear your rants in tomorrow's live. You, you don't know Joe. Listen, Jacques is being introduced to the Zach pack. He's going to learn everyone's name and he's going to, he's going to be down with it. <laughs> um, okay. But let's talk Vanderpump. So I feel like the meat of this week's episode of Vanderpump was Tom versus Ariana. First of all, what are your thoughts of the water sommelier that came in? Oh my God. Like, Let's try all the different sparkling waters. I fucking loved that. And before I watched the episode, I saw all the tweets and I saw Jack's tweeting and everyone being like, oh my God, you know that a show has no storyline when they bring in a water sommelier. And I was like, oh wow, it must be like really boring. And then I watched it and I was like so into it. And they were like, this wine is, uh, this this uh, water is like a thousand dollars and this is the only bottle in America. And I was like, wow, I didn't know all this about water. I I was into it and I don't really drink alcohol. Like I'm not a boozer. Like I love my water. I have my canned liquid death here. So I would be like right at home doing that. So yes, very into it. Hey, my only issue with the water sommelier is that like those sparkling waters, like you can't get them anywhere. You can't go to the bodega. You can't go to a restaurant. You're not going to find, you're going to find liquid death and you're going to find period. Like those are your options. And those weren't the wines that they were tasting. Remember the one where he's like this one, if you shake it, it gets milky in it. And some, some porn stars think it tastes like cum. And I was like, That's, <laughs> I was like what? you'd no. be like, I'll have like three latest things. No, I don't like the taste of cum. <laughs> come does it taste i mean it depends on the uh you know it depends on who the it's cow. coming from yeah it who depends it's coming on from exactly yes. and you know if what their diet is because then you can you can taste it and it's just i would not want to be drinking water that tastes like cum yeah i mean i have um i had this sunscreen that literally looked exactly like cum no it was like a, it was like a sunscreen oil and it was like crazy and i'm like i can't use this anymore because like i'll go to like get a tan or whatever and i'll like be layering it on i'm like this feels like so wrong <laughs> you're just like squirting it on as you're tanning it, it li i'm telling you it was like exact like it was like crazy like i'm like they should use this in like you know movies when they do like fake money shots or something listen i will agree with Jax in the sense that like the idea of doing like a water tasting sounds really dumb however when you add the context of like oh but they were bringing their own mixer so that way they can make drinks with the you know uh sparkling water and then we had the the mess of it all we had katie and tom we had tom and ariana like there was still drama and mess that came from it so i wasn't entirely mad at the get together i did think the concept of doing a water tasting was dumb especially I mean, it's like, what's the point of doing a water tasting you can't try any of these waters anywhere yeah, but that's like reality shows just do dumb things. Like we're doing goat yoga where, um, you know, when they would do the Cirque du Soleil stuff, remember they would go and do that all the time and twirl from the fucking roof from a ribbon. Like yeah. you've always got to like come up with like a new stupid activity to do. Stripper poles back in the day, they would all go to like a stripper lesson, Danielle Staub and all of that. So, you know, I'm into it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, lead the trend. 
you know what? I would actually love to have a water tasting, but as long as it's like bring your own mixer, right? Like bring a vodka, bring which also, yeah. Some of the some of the choices that they bring, you know, I'm a seasoned alcoholic. So the the choices that they bring to the table with the liquor that they're bringing, I'm like, you guys can afford something better. Like you you have Milagro tequila, Katie Maloney. Like, what are you drinking with your life? You know, I actually thought that because I'm not like that because I don't drink. I don't know the different brands, but I think like um, Sheena had some like pink thing. And I remember thinking to myself, like, that sounds like a high school drink. Like this is like not very sophisticated. (laughs) Well, I think so if I remember correctly, it was Smirnoff and Smirnoff is not it's not top shelf. Smirnoff is very much what you can afford in college. But I think Sheena had like a brand deal where she was promoting Smirnoff. So I think she just had a bunch of Smirnoff at home. And she was like, let me bring the Smirnoff and let me try to keep these deals coming in. Okay, that makes sense. Because I did. I was like, "Mm, Smirnoff is like not what you like bring to it. You're not like, ooh, I brought a bottle of Smirnoff. Everybody everyone's like, ooh, baller. (laughs) Smirnoff's like $12. And you're like 40 and you're on TV and you're like famous and you're like, look what I got, guys. I brought a flavored Smirnoff. Um, yeah, no. Um, but yeah, so the water tasting, I wasn't mad because the drama, you know, there was like, you know, conflict that ensued from it. Um, what did you think of how hard Ariana went at Tom because she claims that he tried to murder her dog? Okay. Um, I think that was his fault I do blame him like don't lock someone's dog in their bedroom and look I have a little dog you know back in Australia and there are certain dogs that will just like chew everything so I treat my dog like a toddler so and even like if I'm going out or I'm leaving with my mom or something I'll be like you know think of him like a two-year-old like if you have anything lying around like he will get into it so you have to be aware of that so um yeah and Okay, this whole thing with how angry she is, obviously she's completely bitter and full of rage. And again, I can't believe now I'm going to be like the Ariana Defender because I was the one as soon as Scandival broke. I'm like, um, she's like more famous than ever, guys. Like, why do you feel sorry for her? But now I'm like mad at everyone shaming her for being bitter and angry because it's like, yeah, like it, it happened recently. Like you can have all of these like deals and all of these good things happening and getting on Dancing with the Stars and stuff and still be filled with rage by him. And then the situation with the dog, of course, that's just going to like trigger and bring everything back up again. Now, I don't think that Ariana is an angel and uh, I never thought she was an angel. And when Tom was saying stuff at the time about like, you know, she would talk to me like shit and all of these things. I think that's all true. And we are seeing this like other side of her, but I'm not into like shaming her for her anger in the same way that I didn't when Erica Jane went through it and everyone was piling on Erica Jane for how she behaved. And I'm like, um, as if you wouldn't be like defensive and lashing out if you were going through what Erica Jane was. So um, yeah, I'm becoming like an Ariana defender. <laughs> I'll send you on my team Ariana shirts. Um, My issue when it comes to the dog, though, is she's so hard on these are not your pets. These are my pets. I paid the adoption fees. They belong to me. So for me, like you, I am also a pet owner. I know that my dogs are puppies, so they get into a ton of shit. They've chewed up my plants. They've chewed up my couch. Like They've chewed up things. So anytime I leave the house and I have to leave them alone... I have to take precautions. I have CBD chewies. I have bones that I give them. I put them in crates. I have to make sure I'm not gone for more than like three hours at a time because I don't want to leave them in the crates for that long. You go through every single precaution you have to take, like you and Chunky. You have to think these things through. So my issue with Ariana is she's like, this dog is not Tom's dog. This dog is not Tom's responsibility because I paid the adoption fee, so this is my dog. Then it's like, okay, then you should not be leaving your dog home alone where the dog is in the care of Tom Sandoval. If you think he's that terrible of a person and you don't want him to have any ownership over the dog, then you know what? Figure it the fuck out. Put the dog in a crate, get the dog a babysitter, take the dog with you. Do whatever you have to do that puts zero responsibility of the dog on Tom Sandoval. Okay? People are like, well, he went into her bedroom and he shouldn't have done that because it was locked. 
He's also an owner of this home. He made it clear that he went into the bedroom because the repairman had to fix the AC unit. So it wasn't like he was just going to go sniff her panties or anything. Like he wasn't going in there to go chill. He was going in there because he is an owner of the house. So he also has to handle the response. And he's the only one paying the mortgage. I was such a team Ariana person. And now I'm kind of just like, this just doesn't logically make any sense to me. You know, well, we've flipped. We have completely flipped because when you I came know. out hard for Ariana at the start and I was like, Zach, I think you should be team Tom and Raquel. And you were like, absolutely not. And I'm like, mm, I think I'm team Tom and Raquel. And now I've changed now that everyone else is switching. Yeah. Um, okay. Mallory's very team Ariana. She said, why is everyone assuming that Ariana left Maya in the care of Tom Sandoval in this situation? Because she left Maya alone with Tom Sandoval. My thing is, here's the thing. Like, if I had a roommate, even if I did have a roommate, which I don't, like, I would still not leave. If I didn't trust my roommate, I would still crate my dogs. I would still do the things that I needed to do because I know my dogs and I know their behavior. So whether she intentionally left Maya in the care of Tom or not, in this case, she left the dog home alone, assuming Tom would take care of the dog. So for me, like, I get both sides of it. I get her side of like, well, I left the dog home alone. I should be able to leave my dog home alone if I leave my door closed and locked. Sure, but it's just, I don't know. I think he was an idiot and he left the dog locked in the room and shouldn't have done that. He was probably pissed at her and was like, well, if this is your dog, then you know what? You take care of your dog. I'm leaving your dog in your room, whatever. He wasn't assuming that she was going to leave her leftovers on, you know, the counter or whatever. Um, Zach, you're assuming, we're all assuming, Mallory. Like nobody yeah. has any reference of what actually went on that day. Wait, two things. You can leave a dog home by itself. Like not every dog need I mean, I actually when I was raising Chunky, I was um very careful that even as a puppy, I would go out and leave him by himself for a while because I didn't want a dog to get separation anxiety and because other people that spoil their pets too much, they leave and the dog's like falling apart and can't be left by itself and yeah. is, you know, shaking and everything. So I was very careful like that. So a dog can be left alone and also I can't believe we're going on so much about this dog thing, but like you don't lock a dog in a bedroom. Like no. was there was the water dish there? Like what the fuck? Like um yeah, you don't lock a fucking dog in someone's bedroom. So no. the dog should have been free to roam the house. No, and the bedroom doors should be shut. I agree with that. I don't think that he should have locked the dog. I want to make that clear. I don't think that he should have left the dog in her bedroom, period, number one. Because, listen, the dog's going to have to go potty. The dog's going to need water. But also, those responsibilities are not on Tom Sandoval. Those responsibilities are, are, are on Ariana. Had she been like, yes, this is our dog. We share this dog. I would feel a little differently. But because she's going so hard about like, this is not Tom's dog because I paid for the adoption fees. I'm like, well, then by that logic, then you know what? Fine. That's what we're going to go by. And the dog should be solely your responsibility if you're going to go that hard on it. You know, I can't with this comment up there. Did you pin that? Zach, who has never had a relationship, is judging again. That's what I do. I judge 24-7. And you know what? I'm glad I've never been in a relationship because they sound awful Mtronics. I'm sure you're in a terrible relationship. Period. Um, These people are so <laughs> fucking... It's like a fucking TV show. By the way, these shows are like... That show was... I mean, that scene was definitely real, but, like, people... You have to remember, like, it's a TV show. <laughs> and it's, like, very produced. <laughs> I feel like Why people forget we, that. You know, Why like, even before... For reality shows, like even before they film, they have the storylines mapped out. Like people don't get handed a script, yeah. but like the producers sit together and map out a whole season storyline and then direct people to follow that. And then sometimes they veer off course. <laughs> That's how these well, things work. Well, let's talk about that because Jax went on a tangent at Jax's his, uh, sports bar in Studio City. He went on a tangent about how Vanderpump, Vanderpump Rules at this point is scripted. Now, he used the term scripted, but I think people misinterpret that term. Like, there's not an actual line-by-line -line script, but, like, I've talked to Vanderpump producers, and they're like, okay, this is the scene. These are the people that are showing up to lunch. These are the topics that need to be discussed. And so there is a level of producing of like, okay, this is what we need to get you guys saying on camera. Like, talk about the dog situation. Talk about this situation. They feed that to the, to, they feed the topics to the cast, and then they say that on camera. 
Um, yeah, sorry. Leslie left a comment. This is true. She said Ariana is upset because what happened to the dog is another example of how Tom totally doesn't care about her. Yes, I agree with that. That was well, triggering. I think for- leaving your dog alone shows that you don't care very much either. Yeah. I agree. I agree with you both. Um, okay. As far as the scripted thing, yeah, this it's been more, the the producers have been more heavy handed in the last couple of episodes. So one last week when they had the whole thing of Tom Schwartz kissing Sheena, that was so produced and um, fake the way that they brought that out. And like when Schwartz like accidentally like blurted it out and then they were like directing all these conversations around it because they felt like, wow, like, this whole season has been scanned of all and they probably were expecting Raquel to come back and then she didn't. And it, you know, probably affected that mapped out plan of the season that they had. And then Ariana being so busy and then her not wanting to film with Tom, I'm sure it was so difficult behind the scenes, but um, so where we're at now, they're definitely producing scenes and the stuff with the dog that clearly happened for real. But then when they were all at the beach, it was like they were all told to bring it up. And they were told to bring up the thing about the uh assistant. Um when they're like, oh, so did you fire your assistant yet? So yes, I know where Jax is coming from because he's looking at that and he's like, oh yeah. my God, like the producers are literally just telling them to like talk about this shit. And they didn't even seem that into it. Like at the beach yeah. scene when like James was like throwing a few few things out there it's like he didn't even care but it's just like okay i've been like told to talk about this so i guess that's what we're talking about for the scene well people also don't realize at the start of every season the producers sit down with each cast member they're like what's going on in your life right now what is going on in your life in the next three four five six months and like they map out what they envision the storylines to be those can change and evolve as the season progresses but like for the most part they're trying to follow the story that way they can have some sort of cohesion cohesive storyline to follow throughout the season so that they can sell that to the audience um Hmm. marianne stout says that Anne said that nobody knew that the dog was in ariana's room which yeah, is okay. possible as well. He may not have deliberately locked the dog in there, or Anne may not have deliberately locked the dog in there. We we don't know. Can we talk about this whole Anne thing? So, first okay. of all, this, this fucking Anne is so unprofessional. I would never hire her. If I was a celebrity and I was looking for an assistant, like, the fact that she's in their house she's literally working for tom and then she's like bringing i don't know again this could be scripted this could be another like fake storyline so i don't want to like take it super seriously but just say for say that it's actually real the fact that she like was in there with her fucking resume and practically doing an interview with ariana in the kitchen while she's still working for tom and then tom rightfully fires her um and then he's being made out to be like bad for doing that it's like oh, my employee is like looking for another job like in my house while like, working for me in my house yeah and then doing confessionals like what <laughs> yeah I, that to me is bizarre <laughs> everyone's like team and team and i'm like i don't know well then like other people have come out and said that they were remo- that she was an improv girl that she would do improv shows and they think this is like a character or a bit that she's acting up for the cameras, which like, listen, also smart on her. Let's go work for, you know, one of the most notorious reality stars, get on the reality show, sell my little character, become likable to the audience, you know, become team Ariana. Yeah. It, it, feels something's off with it and you know last week we won't get into it again but we're talking about uh neurodivergent people i'm like "Mm, Anne's a little bit how you going like and but then you're like is she like putting this on like what's going (laughs) what's going on with her tom is suing and i didn't know tom was suing Anne. and is pushing her podcast i wouldn't be surprised if she has a podcast did she have a pod wait i'm dying Anne has a podcast that is so funny but people were talking about her her team Ariana cheerleader outfit, her costume, when she was like, team Ariana. She's playing this up. She knows what she's doing. Yeah, it's cringe. Definitely, I'm definitely team Tom on that one. And Ariana, again, this could be a fake storyline, but if it's real, Ariana is being such a bit of bitch, being like, I'm going to steal his assistant. Like, <laughs> but I kind of get it. You know, you're allowed to be angry. Um, Not yeah. to sound like Mr. Feminist here, but it is a bit like let her have her emotions like let her be angry and gross and um you know express 
herself in that way because she really did get fucked over. And like, yes, I'm sure at this point now that it's been a year or whatever since, she um, could probably look at it more of like, wow, that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Look how much money I made. Let's, you know, completely made my career and changed my life for the better. But when you're in it, she is still going to be feeling all the emotions of that 10-year relationship. And then even like being thrust into the spotlight in the way that she was, like that's a lot. Like to have the whole world just suddenly yeah. weighing in on your personal life on that scale and you're just, you know, just working like crazy. I mean, she went from like being some slob that was like in her room fucking not doing anything, like, you know, not picking, taking out the trash, like, yeah, literally like a fucking couch potato to being like the most famous reality star of last year. So I just feel like she's probably got a lot on and cut her some slack with her erratic behavior. No, I agree. And I said that from the beginning that like, not only she's on a high right now, someone said it on the show or maybe it was off the show, but I remember somebody saying this recently and I'm like, that's exactly what I was saying all of last year. She's on this high, but at some point the high is going to end. Like it's going to come back down. And when it comes back down, that's when reality is really going to hit her. Um, and that's when I think she's really going to have to sit and process these emotions. Cause she also, I don't think has had a proper opportunity to grieve the loss of her relationship with Tom. She went into filming with him. She immediately jumped into another relationship. She's been working nonstop. She's, you know, as Lala said, has suddenly become God that she's like this glorious reality star. Now we're seeing the audience start to turn on her, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's going to come down and it's going to come down hard on her. Yeah. Um, someone, Mary Ann, sorry, shark, get help and medic. What's the issue? Can Mary Ann, like, yeah, what is she even saying that in, like, what did I say that I need medication for? Like, please. Um, and someone else said, did anyone see Ann's IMDb? I actually would love to see her IMDb. Well, people are saying her, her podcast is called I Signed an NDA. So she does have a podcast now. <laughs> That's so funny. These people are so thirsty. <laughs> They really are. Um, she jumped in because he's probably amazing in bed because I think Tom is probably the worst in bed. I don't think Tom would be bad in bed. I think Tom would be, I think he'd be like, oh, no, I think he'd be good in bed because he was like having sex with like Billy Lee and stuff. I think he's pretty open-minded. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's like. He's not in bed because he was having sex with <laughs> Billy Lee. Oh my God, that's the best thing that has come out of your mouth tonight. Oh, sorry. Apologies to Mary Ann. She said, not you, Shark, Ariana. Ariana. Yes. I thought she was talking about Ariana too. Oh, I thought she was attacking me. I'm like, then what? Sorry. I'm, I'm so used to people like <laughs> saying shit like that to me. Apologies, Mary Ann. Shout out, Mary Ann. And yes, I think that um, Ariana, pro look, Ariana struggled with a lot of mental health issues for really long time and i think getting this level of fame this quick and also when you reach the top the only way to come is it, down yeah. um yeah i think she's probably got a lot on her plate mentally yeah seriously just because she had successes doesn't mean she doesn't get to grieve in her own way no i agree i just don't think she's had the opportunity to grieve Lindsay. is what i'm saying i don't think she's had time to sit in because in order to grieve, you have to kind of sit in the silence with your own noise and process that. And she's not had an opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, Ariana saying that she, he doesn't change her under his oh, his underwear. What did you think about that? Oh, um, she just seems to be saying nasty comments all the time. So I don't even know if that's true. I mean, Tom Sandoval's like notoriously kind of superficial and vain. I mean, for years and years on the show, he was always like dressing up. And even if you go back to season one, he was like shaving his face because he thought, actually, I think that is good for your skin, actually. But it is. Caroline Manzo does that. Yeah. So I can't see him as being someone that wears underwear for days in a row. I mean, unless he's on like a bender on a weekend, like maybe. But even then, I still feel like he'd have a shower and change his clothes. Uh, you're just devastated when you're betrayed. This is the girl who is going to fall on the sword for him. Yeah, I agree. She loved him. Well, she wanted to make it work, and he was already fucking Raquel at that point. So, mm. would, did you see Raquel's interview where she said that she would return to reality television if it was ethical? Like she's girl. Like, hey, to save the world. Look, like we talked about last week, and we talked about her. You know maybe being on the spectrum and being misled by people. It's like, 
even when she does her interviews and stuff, like it just, it doesn't register register with me anymore. Like, yes, I saw it, but I don't take anything she says seriously. I kind of just like shake my head because it's just very obvious that she's made, she's been steered in the wrong direction in terms of career. And um, it's just kind of sad, honestly. And she's just like boring now too. She's really boring now. Like she was always boring. I've said this from the beginning. She was always boring. She was never interesting. I never enjoyed watching her on Vanderpump ever from her first season. Um, I thought she was boring and then I kind of, then I liked her. No, I, I liked her and she worked in the group and I've heard that she's like fun in real life and stuff, but just as a celebrity right now, you know, she didn't lean into the villain thing. Like she didn't really pick a lane. So she's just kind of like nothing now. And now people on the show are like moving on. Now we have like the Valley, you know, people are like coming back around to Tom Sandoval. Um, She's kind of like left behind and it's crazy how quickly things move too, because say like six months ago, she was like one of the most kind of infamous celebrities around and it was very much like what is she going to do next what is she going to do next and then she sort of just like did this boring podcast and now it's like all of that celebrity juice that she had to like do something with it is kind of like dissipated and it's like now we're on to the you know the next reality villain yeah uh which apparently is ariana um <laughs> by the way um do you remember when the scandal happened I said that Raquel should have done OnlyFans and I went really hard down that path and I said she doesn't have to do nudity or anything, but I'm like, this is when she sort of disappeared and everyone wanted to hear from her. If she had literally just done an OnlyFans for like a couple of months and just had like lingerie photos and maybe even like posted stuff about Scandival on there, even like did, uh, I don't know, audio messages or like tea about Scandival, she would have made so much money off the back of that. Like she probably would have made as much as Ariana was making off of endorsements. So again, that's just another opportunity that she like squandered. She fumbled the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, Megan says Rachel being semi a dumbass does not make her on any (laughs) spectrum. She seems like a Valley girl. I would agree. She does have very Valley girl traits, but I will also say there's something to her that I think is more than just being a valley girl. Like there's something we off. discussed it a bit last we discussed it a bit last week and I had talked to someone that knew her in real life and um there's there's something there that goes beyond just being like dumb. Um okay let's talk I don't think there's anything aside from the Tom and Ariana stuff there's uh nothing more to talk about with Vanderpump. I mean unless you want to talk about Brock but I No the Valley's uh, more Let's talk about the valley. The valley's where it's at right now. The, <laughs> the valley was fire. so good this week. Poor Kristen Doty was like in the thick of it. Um, and I guess I just like my heart goes out to Kristen because I'm such a Kristen Doty. I cannot bite my tongue for the life of me. I just put things out there and then I have to apologize for them. I'm just very in the moment and I just say things that I shouldn't be saying. Um, and Jock gets mad at me all the time. He's like, girl, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? He's like always getting mad at me about the things that I do. But I'm like, I can't help myself. This is just who I am. So I totally get Kristen Doty. Um, but I also kind of felt bad for her because I was like the way the whole table and the whole cast turns on her in this episode of The Valley where they're like, Kristen's lying and Kristen's totally making that up and we have no idea what she's talking about. I was like, you guys are all fucking liars. Wait, set set it up for everyone so everyone knows exactly what happened and then we can break it down. So Kristen, I guess when she was fighting with Brittany in last week's episode, which it was interesting the, the way they even presented in this episode because we don't actually get to see the scene. We just see clips of the flashbacks in the way that everyone's retelling it in, you know, there after that night at Michelle's house. But so they're at Michelle's house and Kristen's getting backed into a corner because Brittany thinks that Kristen's a potster and they're talking about how Jax brings Alex to boys night and it's to confront Luke. And so finally Kristen's like, well, everybody thinks that, you know, Michelle is a racist and a Republican. And, you know, am I being messy for saying that out loud when everyone's talking about her behind her back? 
And then suddenly Jasmine and Zach and everybody's like, what are you talking about? We've never heard this. And Michelle's sitting there like, what do you mean? I'm a racist and a Republican. And they're saying that this all comes from Jen. And Janet's the pregnant girl with the boring husband. And so finally we call Janet and we're like, Janet, what's going on? Did you actually say this? And Janet kind of on camera admits that like she kind of said some of these things, like she alluded, it seems like there was a lot of dancing around these topics about like, they all think that Michelle's Republican and homophobic and racist, but they didn't actually explicitly say these things about Shannon. So it, there's a game of telephone from Janet to Jasmine, to Zach, to Kristen. And Kristen just brought it up on camera that everyone's basically talking shit about Michelle. I don't think she was trying to accuse Michelle of these things as much as she was trying to say, everyone's talking shit about Michelle behind her back. Yes. And here's exactly what happened. Cause I can tell. So they're all really angry. Okay. So Kristen is saying that it came from Janet and then it came from Zach and Jasmine, basically like all of them had kind of been talking about it. And they're saying that Kristen is misrepresenting what was said and they're trying to catch her sort of on semantics. And they're like, we never said she was a racist and a Republican, but when you, you can, they were absolutely shading Michelle saying that she was a Republican. They were talking about how she opposed the Florida don't say gay bill. And it was so annoying. And I really like, I like all of them. And I like Janet and Jason because I met them at the premiere. So no shade to them, but like Janet was in her confessional kind of like, she was just a bit on a moral high horse about like, well, I think Michelle was getting some like misinformation. Like, why is it misinformation? Cause oh, she has a different she said, opinion. She said, I think she's getting caught up in an alternate algorithm. That's yeah. On the wrong side of the algorithm. And it's like, what? Cause she has a different opinion than you on the don't say gay bill that she's on like getting misinformation on the wrong algorithm. No, she just like has a different opinion. Like plenty of people, you know, the don't say gay bill. I mean, look, it's kind of complicated. So I get why people are criticizing parts of it. But, you know, the core of it is sort of like don't be talking about all this like gender, transgender stuff to like little kids. So you can understand how Michelle, they quoted and she said it protects children. And Janet was like, no, it doesn't. And it was like just so obvious that all of them were talking about her being a Republican. And, you know, even if they didn't say the word racist, they are um, – even if they didn't say the word racist – they clearly inferring like there's that association, things. right? There's an association that if you're Republican, you must be white. You're probably racist and xenophobic and homophobic. And you don't, you know, you don't support the rights of minorities. And there's just that connotation with the term uh, Republican being thrown out there. Yeah, and, like, even Zach was saying, like, you cannot be a Republican in L.A. or you won't get invited to any parties and all of that. It's just, like, they were clearly talking shit and now they're trying to deflect and put it all on Kristen because maybe they maybe they verbatim didn't say she's a racist Republican but the fucking sentiment was there that they were shading her over what they assume are her views yeah. and they were looking at it in a negative light and being condescending and thinking that she's ignorant and you know maybe homophobic etc and it's just like really fucked up and I'm completely team Kristen on this and I think they have just all thrown Kristen under the bus because they want her like even though Kristen I think partook in the conversation a little bit as well they want her to just take all of the blame so like none of it is on them because she's the one that brought it on camera and they didn't want because like here's the other thing and we know this too there are a lot of conversations that happen off camera and then when people are on camera suddenly their you know viewpoints are different they're um, you know, their beliefs are different. The way that they interact with people is different. And so I think there's a lot of that that goes on. And I think that's what's happening on the show is they were all talking shit about Michelle at the end of the day. They all think that she's a Republican. They all think she's uber conservative. Um, and whether she is or she isn't is beside the fact. It's just the fact that they are lumping her into that category. And you can tell as you said in Janet's interview where she's just like, you know, I think she was just on the wrong side of the algorithm and she's clearly misinformed with the information that she's getting. Like that statement alone in her confessional told me that what Kristen said is basically true and none of them want to say it because none of them want to look bad on camera. 
A hundred percent. When she said that, I'm like, oh, wow, you guys are really judging Michelle. Like you guys were fucking yeah. talking shit. And then if you want to come up here and then try be PC about it and be like, well, I just felt like she was on the wrong side of the algorithm. It's like, no, you guys were all shit talking. And I saw N-Dubs uh, commented, he said that um, California Republicans are different. They only care about money. Yeah, she's probably just like, an, I mean, yeah. it, she can yeah, have whatever yeah. view she wants, but like, yeah, I'm sure it's not that serious. And, um, you know, I'm independent. People think I'm conservative all the time because I'm very politically incorrect. I'm really not, but I guess by American standards, I get lumped into that all the time. But I'm very independent. My views are, like, literally with, like, every single party. Like, I can relate to stuff right. in every single political party. And there is a thing when you, like, don't fit into that liberal stereotype where you do kind of feel like, you know... Are people like judging me? Are they thinking that I'm this and these different labels? I really related to Michelle because that's kind of the worst fear that you have when you don't fit into that like woke stereotype. But then it's like, oh yeah, all my friends were like talking about me in this manner. Um, yeah. And yeah, I thought it was really fucked up. And I love Michelle, by the way. I'm like, she's the queen of the show to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's great as a newbie. Like she's standing out more than Janet or... Who's the other newbie? There's another new one that's married to Danny, right? What's her name? The wasn't she the Oh um Naya, the Naya, Latina yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, the really pretty beauty queen. Yeah. She's pretty and Janet's great, but like you can tell that Danielle's really the one that or sorry, not Danielle, Michelle is the one that's really kind of outshining the other ladies as one of the newbies. Um well, wait, the fact that they put her well, okay. One, she has a very compelling marriage breakdown and they're doing counseling on camera, which is like fascinating. And then because she's kind of been like targeted over her politics, um, and has had to like stand up for herself. Like it's kind of like put her in the spotlight because a lot of the other cast members naturally are getting outshone a bit by Kristen, Jackson, and Brittany because, you know, we all know them. We watch them on TV for like 10 years. They're pros at reality. Like Jax especially is like on fire with all of the drama that he's causing. And, you know, Kristen is crazy Kristen. And now I feel like Michelle has kind of emerged. And I actually think Michelle will get a lot of... um fans from this because a lot of the viewers that are more on the conservative side they don't like to see the vilification that always happens of like whoever the conservative housewife is um like if you even go on kelly dodd's page as much as a lot of people hate her like she has so many fans like they have thousands of people kelly dodd does on her patreon and stuff so i think michelle should just you know speak her truth and not worry about it well i think it's pretty telling like again, reading between the lines like we did with Janet's confessional, I think it's pretty telling that Jesse, his first line of defense was, Kristen, how dare you say that? Do you not realize we have a business that we have to protect? Which to me tells me that Jesse and Michelle are pretty conservative. I don't think conservative and Republican necessarily mean racist and homophobic. I think people throw those terms around way too loosely. I think I texted you earlier today. I was like, are we still like really afraid of like, being called racist these days like i understand a couple years ago that word had a lot more weight to it but now people throw those terms around so loosely and listen this is your own fucking fault right because you're throwing that term out so loosely that you've diluted what that actual argument means that people call you and i racist and homophobic and xenophobic they call us all the names in the books that at this point those words don't have the validity that they should have because those are serious words and those are serious issues that still exist in this world today and unfortunately there are loud mouths on social media that have fucked that up and so i think but to me my initial reaction was oh is it really because christian's like the worst thing you could be called in the world is a racist and i'm like are we really still in that day and age where that's the yeah. worst thing that you can be called because at this point it doesn't hold the same weight that it once did unfortunately yeah no absolutely but like she has some ptsd because it <laughs> that ruined her entire canceled. yeah no i get it It got canceled like she got canceled. so yeah she's which is so interesting to watch her kind of having these like vietnam flashbacks to when she was canceled um and fearing that it's going to happen again and i totally get michelle and jesse being on the offensive because i'm sure in real life when people meet them and know that they're probably republican like no one like no one cares about this shit 
in real life. Like this is more of like an internet thing and, yeah. you know, people commenting on people's, how could you vote for whatever, you know, the person that I don't agree with. But in real life it's not really an issue, but they – are then aware that they're putting themselves and their business out on a television show. Bravo is like a notoriously, well, I was going to say it's a, notorious, a notoriously liberal audience, but I don't even know if it is. I think it's just more that the section of the liberal audience is so loud and so come with their pitchforks for anybody that um, yeah. doesn't fall in line with their views. And we have seen people on Bravo be cancelled many times, like uh, including people on Vanderpump Rules, like they fired what, Stasi, Jax, Brittany, Max, Brett, like all in like one thing. So of course, Jesse and Michelle are going to be shitting themselves like, oh my God, like, you know, are we going to, are we going to lose clients? Like, is this going to like turn into a thing? That's their first time on reality television. They're probably thinking yeah. the worst. And yeah, so I, I felt bad for them. And I felt bad for Kristen having to take all the heat for what was clearly a group conversation. Yeah. I felt bad. Cause it was like, they clearly feel this way about Michelle and Jesse. They clearly said things either blatantly or, you know, alluded to certain things or were trying to guide someone down that path. And I think they all did. I think Janet did. I think Jasmine did. I think Zach did. I think they were all kind of like, oh, yeah, Michelle, 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 Michelle. And now all of a sudden, now that it's come out, they're like, I didn't say that. I would never go there. But I did. I did kind of appreciate that Jesse's like, really, you're going to call me racist, Kristen, when you're the one that got fired from Vanderpump Rules for being an actual racist. And that's when she like really had to eat her words. Because my thing, too, is it's like, I do love me some Kristen Doty. But if you're going to throw out throw that out there and talk about this on camera, you have to also remember what you just went through a few years ago. So for you to even tiptoe on that because Kristen doesn't believe that she's racist but her actions you know were then blown up in the media and it became this whole thing that like I would think she would be a little more mindful of that you know well I think she is and she was basically saying that she was and I think it just was a she blurted something out and she didn't I don't think she was she, she was on the defense when she said it yeah and then she was trying to explain herself like trust me after what i went through like i'm the last person that would be labeling somebody as that so i think she genuinely felt bad and then again she was just left there you know holding the bag like she was the only one um but look this is why we love reality shows because it's like look if you're trying to hide something or you're talking about shit off camera someone's gonna bring it up and throw you under the fucking bus and then if you come for someone they're gonna throw something back at you and that's what makes it you know fun so i just i loved it from all sides like it was a fucking stellar episode everyone delivered i'm you know team Kristen and michelle but I was here for everybody. Everyone brought it. Everyone like, and I think Jax has a good point of being like, listen, they don't know the game of reality TV. Vanderpump rules now has become so scripted. He's like, these people are not, he's like, people don't really wear Chanel earrings to the beach. Like that's just the reality of it. And Vanderpump rules has so much lost the plot. However, with, with the Valley, like it is so much more real and authentic and, and it is because these people don't know the game of reality TV. And at the same time, they're also working for their paychecks, right? Like they have kids to feed. They have a mortgage to pay for. Very similar to like Vanderpump Rules at the beginning, right? They had rent to pay for. They were servers trying to earn their tips. Like they were working for their jobs that I think that's where we're at with the group at the Valley right now. Yeah, and I love that they actually aired all of this because they easily could have cut it out like they did on Beverly Hills. Oh, and yeah. all of the stuff that came out about Beverly Hills that they were arguing about um, Anna, Anna Marie's husband was against transgender women in sports and they thought that um, that Anna Marie was like a Trump supporter and apparently that was like a huge cause of drama and they edited it all out. And that actually would have been like really juicy to watch how Anna Marie handled that and the back and forth, and I think it would have made a much more interesting um, dynamic season because yeah. I think we're used to, like we did see a lot of political fighting on the shows over the last few years and it was kind of horrible and it destroyed Housewives of New York, but it's usually like calling a white person ignorant or racist, which they do to like Ramona and stuff, but then to have like 
this really intelligent, um, successful black woman who was, you know, a nurse. I can't pronounce her name. And and it's, you know, the anesthesia and an anesthetist, whatever. And, you know, has this successful husband and her to be able to like come back at you. I mean, even in her fights with Crystal, like she was pretty, you know, she was able to lob him back at Crystal and some of the other girls, like she was no dummy. So I think that would have been very interesting to see one of those kind of fights with that dynamic. Because I think it would have been a more intelligent fight, right? What I think where Roni missed the mark is Ebony was very uh, press savvy. She was very media trained. She knew how to deliver certain lines and to get her point across. But the thing is, she was going up against someone like Luann and Luann wasn't going to go up against it. Luann wasn't going to challenge that. And Ramona, who did challenge her, Ramona is not a very articulate person and Ramona cannot you know, she's not great at communicating what she really is thinking or feeling. She just fumbles the ball and puts her foot in her mouth. So that fight, like we never were able to see a real dialogue in that situation. Whereas I think on Beverly Hills, you know, Anne Marie is very good with her words. She does know how to communicate herself in a way that is, you know, to the point and it's palatable and the audience can digest it. Right. Um, whereas Ramona just is not capable of doing that. So when you're, you have somebody that's the voice of, you know, being a little more conservative, I think you need somebody that's able to clearly get their point across that is, you know, more fact based. And in Anna Marie's interview with Carlos King, it seems like she really could have given Crystal a run for her money because at the end of the day, I don't think Crystal even believes half the bullshit that comes out of her mouth. Crystal is so focused on perception. We all think of Sutton being the one that like is so hyper-focused on her reputation, but I think even more than Sutton, Crystal is the most focused on that. And Crystal is the biggest with virtue signaling and the biggest with pandering to the audience. Well, I think Garcelle's the biggest. <laughs> well, Gar- yeah, Garcelle, sorry. Garcelle Garcelle's is number the, one. Uh, Can't beat Garcelle. In, um, ju- sorry, I was just thinking in terms of, of Anne Marie's yeah. Marie's beefs with people. We saw her fight with Crystal the most and that that's what I was referencing. But I think Garcelle absolutely is the most. And I'm glad that Anne Marie actually brought that to the table and and is like listen i think i think garcelle very much you know um uses these things as a way to make herself look good and make others look bad with while also knowing that they're not going to challenge her yes i mean she uses the race card every single season like anytime she is attacked and she's a really nasty person because even when you look at She knows she's full of shit with this a lot. Like when she came for Kyle that time over the charity thing, which was horrendous. Like, would you have said this to any of the white women? It's like, girl, you would like, she would literally like Garcelle. It's so funny. She gets so offended when people call her a bully. And that was one of the things that she went after Dorit for, but she completely bullied Kyle the first season and Lisa Rinna later on where she just like keeps coming for you. She waits for you to react. Then when you react, she gets so angry and calls you a racist. And like, if they had left Anna Marie's stuff in the season and actually shown her home life, shown her coming at these girls and had the back and forth, shown her at the reunion saying, yo, Garcelle, like you actually use the race card and um, you can't you can't use it on me because I'm a black woman too. That would have been epic television. Um, I think it would have divided the audience in such a it would have really split the audience and it would have been great because i think anna marie would have had so many fans behind her and then garcelle would have had so many fans like on that side and that would have just been everything and instead they edited all of her stuff out edited her exposing these other girls all of it and um they just stretched out her going after Sutton's esophagus, which by the way, she was clearly directed by production to do that. So I hate how people like, why did she keep going on about that? It's like, girl, she got dropped in the middle of the season and was clearly like the producers were like telling her to bring that up. Like that was very obvious. Um, So yeah, you know, I feel sorry for her, but I'm glad she's out on the podcast circuit speaking her truth because I'm loving it. Um, Mtronic says, wasn't Garcella full on movie star? Was she a full on movie star? I wouldn't say a full-on movie star, but I mean, look, oh, she, she was, was a known. She was in um, I Know Who Killed Me with Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> she was in that. She was in a lot of, look, Garcelle was in a lot of um, B and C list films, but she also was in a lot of really big stuff. Like she was in Coming to America 
And um, she definitely had some other like really big roles and she was a, you know, a known actress. Like she didn't have the name recognition of say like Denise Richards, but that's because Denise Richards is also like a tabloid mess that was in the tabloids for years and years and doing, you know, nude scenes in films. Like Garcelle was just consistently working and I always really liked Garcelle. Um, And when she joined the show, I was excited. And I remember the first few episodes, I'm like, wow, she's like great. And then when I saw how she was just attacking Kyle and I'm like, oh my God, you really have an agenda. And then when she opened season two, calling Kyle a racist. I'm like, okay, this is so far. I'm like, this woman is horrible. And then she's just continued to do it every season. The way she treated Erica Jane was disgraceful because, well, her and Sutton, um, because that was very much pandering to the audience and and producers, you know, telling them, going, hey, someone's got to go after Erica Jane because the other women on the show are her friends and believe her, even though now where we are, if you look at the case, Lisa Rinner, et cetera, they were sort of on the right side of history <laughs> overall. But, um, yes, the show has absolutely ruined her image for me. I think she is a disgrace and I think she should be off the show and she's horrible and she's the worst. <laughs> I just think the thing with me with Garcelle is it's like you saw Crystal and Sutton eventually come to terms and be like, listen, Erica, maybe I did come at you hard. And I think they also had a level of awareness of being like, this is what producers wanted. This is what fans wanted. Like they were able to have a little bit of humility in that. And, um, you know, be like, listen, Erica, I think I did contribute to piling on to you. And I apologize for that. Garcelle never had that moment. Garcelle was like, well, I had my opinion and that's what you get. And then Garcelle did the same thing to Doree when she's just like, well, I thought that your robbery was fa- like, I was just, I was surprised that you still had your joke. Like the smugness that Garcelle has when it comes to these other women, my issue is If it's the other way around, then she immediately turns it into, well, you're treating me this way because it's about race. And it's like, but that's, but why do you get to be smug? And why do you get to shove your weight on these other women, knowing that they can't challenge you? Because the second that they do, as we saw in that example with Kyle and and the charity that Garcelle didn't pay for, which again, you know, when you reposted that, I looked at, I was like, as somebody that's in the background of the nonprofit world and the charity world, it's so common that people pull shit like that where they're like, hey guys, I'm donating this money and in front of everybody, they want to show that off and then they intentionally don't get the invoice or they intentionally will dodge you forever. I was talking about how we had this one donor that like in front of everybody donated $20,000 for a single uh, silent auction item and was like, oh, look at me, I'm so great, I'm so great and then went on and then we knew how to catch on to some of these donors so I remember going up to him directly and being like, okay, here's the credit card machine. Like we're ready to accept your $20,000 donation because you're parading it to the whole room. And so I charged him on the spot only to then have him call up Amex and have them reverse the charge. People want the clout without actually having to give the money because it's more about the ego than it is the charity. And so when I see people like Garcelle, I don't think it was that easy of like, a, oops, I just had a fumble. And then it comes up on television. And then she's like, would you have done this to the white women on the show? And Kyle's like, I would have done this to anybody because the charity is important to me. And she's like, well, you're just trying to insinuate that black people don't pay their bills. And it's like, no, she was trying to insinuate that you didn't pay your bill because you did not. <laughs> I know. That was like, that blew my mind and that she got away with that and then continued to do it over and over. And she lies a lot. Like I remember when she was on Watch What Happens Live and she kind of said that Lisa Rinna should be replaced on the show and that Lisa Rinna took that very personally and they argued about it at the reunion. And then she's like, I never said that. And then like Andy like had to call her out. And he's like, yeah, but I said, are you talking about Lisa Rinna? And you said, yes. And she's like, yeah, but I didn't say it. And he's like, girl, like, come like, on. You, like, you asked me the question. Yeah. And it was just like, you <laughs> stop. And um, if you look at the last reunion, when Anna Marie came for Garcelle and she was like, Garcelle, you know, like, I agree that black women shouldn't be called angry, but... Um, or use the word attack on black women, but why is it that when Sutton uses that term on me, like you don't say anything? And like Garcelle was so angry because she hates being challenged. She has such a huge ego and she knew that she couldn't lob, you know, the usual like, (laughs) is this a microaggression? Is that why you're saying that, Anna Marie? Because Anna Marie's a black woman. She was just sitting there like seething. Like she's just not 
a nice person at all. And you know what? That's fine because there's a lot of nasty people on reality TV. The issue is that, again, people can't challenge her because she pulls the race card and she gets the whole audience on her side. Then you finally get Anna Marie in there that could have done that job and you edit out like 85% of her story and fire her after a season. So it's just like, where do we go with this, with Garcelle? And Lisa Vanderpump, by the way, sorry to keep going on, she got away with murder for years and years on the show as well because it's like you just have these certain people that get the fans behind them and then they can do, you know, they can jab, they can be the instigator, they can like scheme and come after people because of producers and just get away with it over and over and then claim that they're being bullied because Lisa Vanderpump would always say she's being bullied if they the women came against her like it's just so frustrating and it's such a Beverly Hills problem I did love that at the reunion though Anna Marie like kind of um was able to cut Garcelle off by being like wait how come my experience as a black woman like we're we're both in that like we both can relate to each other as black as the only black women on this show so why is it that my experience isn't as valid and she's like no you're right your experience is valid it was like the first time Garcelle actually had to buckle down and be like no you're right you're you know because Garcelle's played that card so many times at this point and that's not to say that there aren't real racial issues you know and that's not to say that there aren't microaggressions that should be brought to the surface i just think garcelle anytime she's backed into a corner immediately jumps to that when it's like that's clearly not what was going on you know and well that's when they cut that's when she brings them up as if she's done something shady and then someone responds and then that's what you get back so you know we can see the pattern with this but at this point the pattern has happened so many times on so many seasons i know that there are some audience members that will still buy into it i'm sorry that they are a little dense but if you catch on to the pattern this has happened so many times at this point and that's why you know we keep finding ourselves in this situation i'm glad that we had someone like anna marie that was able to come forth and challenge that but then we didn't get to really see that come to the forefront and i think anna marie is such a stronger character on the show than i think garcelle is not because you know she well one she's a doctor she has you know she is an actual housewife she has a husband she has kids that don't hate her you know she is willing to get into the mess she's able to like carry herself in an argument you know yeah she would have been such a good housewife if she had been there to her full potential. Like Garcelle's solo storylines are atrocious. It's like she'll sit at her kitchen counter and scroll through Bumble. She has the worst Bumble. style. I don't know where she lives. It's like, does she live in LA? It's like she lives in a, another fucking county or so. Like it's so far out. Like when, you know, when they do the drone thing of when they zoom to the their house, it looks like you've, you're zooming in from Google Earth to get wherever it is Garcelle lives. It looks so far out of the way. Like, I'm just so over her. Like, I, she's, if she stays, I just want someone to be able to challenge her and to have a fair fight. Then I'll be like, okay, but if we just have to keep watching her scroll Bumble and then, you know, jab at people and pull the race card when they respond, like, I don't want to watch another season of that. I don't either. I just, I, it, to me, it's not interesting. Um, yeah, it just, I mean, And it's unfortunate because it's like I do under I want there to be more representation on this show. But it's like we have the two people that bring diversity are Garcelle and or Garcelle and and Crystal. And I feel like they bring the in terms of storyline like Crystal. I want to see your life with Rob Minkoff. I want to see the 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 celebrities that you rub elbow. This is the real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And her Taco Tuesday night was so low budget. Like I could have done better than that. Yeah, I um I'm excited for next season though because this season was clearly one where they were trying to sort of reset the reset the room, like change the temperature because it had gotten so dark and so toxic and you know, I think that is one reason that they did edit um Anna Marie's stuff out because they really just wanted to be a lot more petty and to just take a step back and now that they've had that breather season I think next season is going to be like full throttle. I don't know what they have planned, but I would imagine that the producers already have like real, they'll definitely bring new people a hundred percent. And I think it'll be big characters. And I think it's going to be like a big season. From what I've heard, it's money. They're trying to bring in that, 
you know, like Diana Jenkins level of money. Like they're trying to bring back that Uber wealth. It's really hard because I feel like most people, you know, we have a lot of the new Varish. We have a lot of the, you know, um, our biggest paycheck comes from real housewives and we don't need any more of those types of housewives. We need people that will show us the real Beverly Hills. Yeah, well, um, you know, I've heard that the new season of Orange County is like one of the best that has ever aired in terms of drama. Like I know a lot about it too. And everything that I'm hearing is like the new season of Orange County is going to like blow everyone away. Like it's like straight up, like from the jump is like drama, 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 like so many shifts, so many like unexpected things. I'm really looking forward to that. And they're doing an international cast trip for once, which they don't usually do. So um, yeah, it'll be exciting. Are they going somewhere other than Mexico? Yeah, they're, 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 I don't know if I can say, I don't know, they posting it, usually they post where they're going on their Instagram stories, but they might be like trying to keep it a secret. So I don't want to blurt out what it is yet, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting. Like when people find out, they'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe they sent the OC housewives there. So clearly like, I feel like the network is going, oh yeah, this is like a big season. We need to give them like a big cast trip. Um, Gail says she supports the LGBTQ plus community and all Americans. I don't know what prompted this, but okay, girl, you do you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a rainbow flag too, my love? Um, Victoria wants to know if we've watched Vanderpump Villa. I have not. Okay, I haven't. And I'll say that I've been hating on the show and I looked at the trailer and I thought the trailer looked so generic and fake but then some people have told me like it's they're going no it's like amazing like it's so good so I'm kind of like okay let me I'm gonna watch it so if I'm gonna be a hater I can be an informed hater I was not impressed by the trailer at all like the trailer to me was like okay they've just they've made like a a fake version of Below Deck um but who knows I am watching the McBee Dynasty though on Peacock which I think is really good. Have you watched that yet? No. That's, I mean, I don't think you'll like that because it's like cowboys in Missouri, but I recommend it because it's very different for like Bravo programming because it's so rural and it's like a family, like it's like, it's like Yellowstone meets Succession, but reality TV version. They're all brothers. They're these cowboys. Um, They have like heaps of drama. Like a couple of them seem to be alcoholics. One of them's married to this like, ukrainian um woman that came over to be his accountant and it's it's juicy i really like it okay well i will trust you to watch vanderpump villa and report back to me on whether or not it's worth it Mm. someone's asking me to do american accent i'm not doing that maybe if i have a few when we go out drinking which i know i don't really drink but when i go out with you i will um i'll get on live and i'll do one then a drunk american accent we need to plan that (laughs) So we can go out soon. Because, hmm. well, I mean, it, you can pick any day. Jacques seems to think I get drunk every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, so you'll be you'll be available. So I mean, I have a busy, I have a busy social um, thing coming up. You know what I'm going to tomorrow? Which I've never even heard of this, but I'm going to some like Pluto TV's anniversary thing. But then after that, I think. I don't. I haven't got it fully confirmed yet, but I think I'm getting into the JoJo Siwa release party for her new single. So that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> mm, that's good. She is doing a full. I mean, she still dresses the same, but she's doing a full rebrand of like my brand isn't kids anymore. I love it. It's so funny. I can't wait. I mean, good for you, girl. All right, it's late. I'm tired. Jacques, thank you for coming on and recapping Vanderpump with us tonight. No problem. Thanks for having me. And yeah, I'm sure I'll be back on or you'll be on my show or something. And thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Go listen to Jacques' podcast. It's called Unpopular. He's got lots more unpopular opinions and he's got a great Patreon. If you're a Bravo fan, you can catch his Bravo content on his Patreon. Thanks, guys. And you can follow him at 
unpopular JP. Why am I promoting all your shit? And you're just yes. Like, can you <laughs> unfollow me at unpopular JP on Instagram? I post there all the time. I post links to the podcast and to the Patreon. I just had an episode uh, the other day with Brandy and Julie on. You guys might know them from Jeff Lewis's show and from Juicy Scoop. And uh, yeah, I do lots of uh, different topics. Sometimes I do politics. Sometimes I do reality TV. Sometimes I just talk about shit that I'm getting up to now that I've moved to LA. So um, there's a lot of content there. And yeah, thanks for listening. Bye. All right. Bye, guys. Talk to you later. Ciao for now.